Well, nothing is stopping the Disney remake train, that's for sure. I mean, the Nine Old Men era of Disney was part of the birth of animation itself, right? And then the Disney Renaissance era was a collection of some of the greatest, most talented animators of all time, all coming together to just, like, completely shift the direction of the universe. So what do you say we just get rid of all that, huh? Let's, let's take an entire art form, throw it in the trash, and replace it with CG that we outsourced to the cheapest VFX house we could find, and then still underpay them somehow anyway. Now, the latest of these masterpieces is the new Peter Pan remake called Peter Pan and Wendy. Much like with the recent Pinocchio remake that came out in late 2022, I assume this is mainly just to brush up a classic movie for modern audiences and try to wipe away much of the uh, questionable material from the original. I mean, I talk a lot about kids' movies from the 90s and just, like, how different they are from today, but stuff made for children in the 40s and 50s? <laughs> like, like, that is not even the same Earth anymore. So as with all these kinds of remakes, the big question is, how is it different from the original? Well, I went back and watched the original 1953 movie and this new one here just because I wondered the same thing myself. Now, the original movie is made up of three major plot points, which is going to Neverland, getting kidnapped by pirates, and getting rescued and then going home. Now, this movie follows pretty much the same exact structure, but just with a lot of changes in some big and small Always. So let me show you what I mean. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Somehow, we're already a third of the way through 2023. <laughs> what? And maybe you still haven't gotten around to doing your New Year's resolution of learning a new skill this year. Cause like, how do you even start? What do you do? You want to learn like literally any music instrument? Self-improvement techniques like journaling or how to get over a creative slump? You want to learn how to make cool stuff for weddings that your friends are definitely going to be jealous of? Well, wouldn't you know, you could learn almost anything on Skillshare. Now, some of you may know, I used to make a lot of video essays on this channel before I started this animation stuff. And I'll tell you right now, true story, I first learned how to do motion graphics and how to use Adobe After Effects from Skillshare. And then I took what I learned from that and applied it to animation and now now here we all are, so. Thanks, Skillshare. Right now, Skillshare has a special offer for all of you, okay? The first thousand people who join Skillshare using my link, you get one month of Skillshare for free. Okay, so let's say you do Skillshare for like an hour a day. That's 30 hours of classes you could get for free. So if this interests you, I highly recommend you click my link down below, sign up to Skillshare, and start learning something new today. Okay, back to the show. Now, one big change that some people on the internet were just so gosh darn upset about is Tinkerbell. Like, some of these people's entire personalities are suddenly just very deeply invested in a cartoon fairy. <laughs> like, like I guarantee none of you have thought about Tinkerbell in like 20 years until this very moment. But since when do any of you care at all about Tinkerbell? It's like when that Velma cartoon showed up and everyone was like so upset that they like ruined characters that no one had ever thought or cared about. Everyone in unison was just like, <laughs> I'm talking of course about how Tinkerbell in this movie is played by Yara Shahidi and like straight up, okay, real talk here. You guys are complaining about this? You're mad? That they made Tinkerbell hotter? <laughs> no, Alex, you don't understand. This is Victorian England we're talking about. It doesn't make any sense that she would look like that. You don't get it. They ruined the holy sanctity of my Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with you here, okay? F fairies are not real. <laughs> I mean, let's be real, fairies used to look like this. It's like, why is no one complaining about this historical inaccuracy? But okay, to be fair, okay, total honesty here. I am actually a little bit annoyed with how they changed Tinkerbell, okay? Because in this 2023 Peter Pan patch, they totally nerfed that dump truck. Like the original Tinkerbell was straight up just a Pixar mom. Okay, she is dragging that wagon all over that movie, okay? Like there's even a part where like they make a point of how wide her hips are. Perfect the way you are. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Do not change a thing. Or like when she gets stuck in the drawer looking for Peter Pan's shadow. Although come to think of it, I've never thought about it before. Uh, sewing shadows, I mean. Of course, I knew it was your shadow the minute I saw it. And I said to myself, I said, I'll put it away for him in- Step bro. But yeah, so this is the real crime here that no one's talking about. However, that all being said, one major change they did to Tinkerbell's character that kind of changes the whole story a fair bit is her relationship with Peter and Wendy. <laughs> Now, I know y'all probably think I'm joking here, okay? But seriously, go back and watch the original 1953 Peter Pan. Like, no joke, it's literally a harem anime. <laughs> Like, like, Peter Pan is this magical 12-year-old boy, or like, whatever age he is, right? Uh, actually, I'm a 700-year-old dragon prince who just looks 12, okay? So it's actually not that weird if you think about it. And like, every girl on the entire island of Neverland is down so bad for this little boy. <laughs> 
Like, like I'm not even joking. 80% of what drives this movie forward is every girl being jealous of every other girl who talks to Peter Pan and then they all try to like mess with or backstab each other the whole time. This movie is so bizarre. Like the movie itself states that Wendy is obsessed with Peter, Tinkerbell is in love with Peter, all the mermaids are just throwing themselves at Peter and trying to like murder Wendy in the process. <laughs> We were only trying to drown her. And even Tiger Lily is just like super into this kid. It's the weirdest thing you'll ever see. Peter Pan's like that kid in fifth grade who could like run the fastest and then just suddenly every girl was into him for no reason. Now in this new remake, of course, all of that is gone. Thank goodness. Like right in the beginning when Peter shows up at the Darling's house to find his shadow, in the original movie, Wendy is just in full thirst mode. Oh, Neverland. Oh, I, I, I'm so happy I... I think I'll give you a, a kiss. What's a, a kiss? Oh, well, uh, I'll show you. <gasps> but in this one, they start talking about, like, kissing, and then Wendy is just not having any of that, thank you very much. What's a kiss? You don't know what a kiss is? No, but I think I need one. But, I... Uh, this is a kiss. So getting back to the movie itself, okay, like I said, the new movie follows the original story pretty close. Wendy's parents are threatening to make her grow up, whatever that means, and Wendy wants to stay a child and just have fun all day, right? What is it that you're afraid of, my love? I want things to stay the way they are. The way they are? You're growing up. Perhaps I don't want to grow up. Well, hey, in that case, you should maybe think about becoming a YouTuber, because, like, if anything, I've regressed mentally these past seven years. And then Peter Pan shows up to get his shadow back, and this new movie just completely skips the part where Nana the dog pours out the kid's, uh, you know, sleep medicine, which you know was, like, at least 60% pure opium. Anyway, so Peter Pan shows up and tells Wendy, John, and Michael that he's come to take them all away to an amazing place. That it's high time we go. Go where? To the one place in the entire universe where you can really be yourself. There are no rules, no schools, no bedtimes, no mothers and fathers, and most of all, no growing up. Oh, wow, we're going to San Francisco? I've uh, always dreamed of flying. It's the easiest thing in the world. All you have to do is fill your head with happy thoughts. Yeah, you know, it's a good thing this movie takes place back in, like, the Stone Age or whatever, because, I mean, imagine Peter trying to do this today. <laughs> wow, you can fly? Anyone can fly. The secret to flying is just happiness. Ah, crap. Well... Thanks anyway, Peter. And so then we get this very pretty CG scene of them flying around London and warping through like a wormhole or something like that that takes them to the magical island of Neverland. Which brings me to something that did kind of bother me about this new movie a little bit. So the island of Neverland itself is supposed to be basically, it's, it's like a magical world of children's imagination, right? It's like, it's like, a, it's like the place from Sharkboy and Lava Girl, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it has pirates and mermaids, fairies, Native Americans for some reason. Like, it's supposed to be all fantastic and whimsical or whatever, right? But like, this Neverland literally just looks like anywhere in the UK. Like, like it's pretty for what it is, I'll give it that. But like, why is Neverland so drab, unsaturated, just, like, it just looks like a regular place, you know what I mean? Like, back in the 90s movie Hook, which is actually one of my favorite movies of all time, by the way. That movie really captured the sort of technicolor magic of Neverland. The food eating scene, the, the Lost Boys secret hideout, Rufio, like everything is like so magical looking. But in this Peter Pan remake, it's just... <laughs> but all the same, now that everyone's in Neverland, this brings me to some of the like kind of major changes they made in this movie, specifically about Neverland itself. <laughs> things Disney has struggled with for forever, apparently, is portraying Native Americans. Now, back in Pinocchio, which came out in 1940, there's this big Native American statue that's just handed out cigars to seven-year-olds. And then the 1953 Peter Pan movie, like, would you believe that uh, nothing has changed? Uh, what makes the red man red? When did he first say, uh, say, uh? Why did he ask you how? Oh my God. <laughs> 
classic kids movie. And like for whatever reason, they followed the like fantasy orc rules or whatever, where like all the men are just whatever this is supposed to be, right? And then Tiger Lily, who's the only young girl in the whole tribe, just looks like a regular little girl. What's going on here? But yeah, so parts like this make a little more sense why, you know, Disney would want to remake a movie like this, because like it might be a little hard to show this to your kids nowadays. Oh, let's go hunt. Tigers? No, no. Personally, I should prefer to see the Aborigines. And the Indians, too. All right, men. Go out and capture a few Indians. <laughs> it's just, what? What? He just says that, and everyone's like, ah, sure, of course, yes, what else would we do? I'm seeing the case more and more for a remake here. But that being said, it, it's almost comical to me, like, how this movie goes about trying to be more sensitive to Native Americans, because we get this scene here. <laughs> It seems. And then they never show up ever again. Hey, so how do you think we could be more sensitive to showing American Indians in this new movie? Hmm, well, I have no idea, so let's just remove them completely. I mean, Tiger Lily is in the movie here and there, and she does, like, one kind of, like, important thing that matters. But aside from that, they just removed, like, 95% of Native American anything in this movie. <laughs> So one largely inconsequential change they made to the new movie is about the Lost Boys, which we already kind of saw in the trailer back from like a month or two ago. Are you... are you Tiger Lily? Mr. Wimente. Which means you must all be... Lost Boys! Every last one of us. But you're not all boys, so? So instead of the Lost Boys, I guess it's more like the Lost Kids, you know? Which really doesn't actually matter all that much in the grand scheme of anything, except that this whole thing was actually addressed back in like the original play and book. Like there's a part where they specifically talk about how only boys get lost and end up in Neverland because girls are too smart to fall out of their carriages. Like even back in 1903, J.M. Barry was like, yeah, girls are way too smart to end up somewhere like this. And then 70 years later, we get the remake where it's like, girls are just as stupid as boys. Ah. Thank you? But like I said, this change really has nothing to do with anything, so like, who cares? But there is one change that I cannot get behind, okay? And that is that they got rid of the mermaids? Man, that was the best part for little Alex. This whole scene right here was just, uh, this, I mean, this was very formative for eight-year-old me. Okay, I'll tell you that right now. Whoever it was that designed these mermaids back in the day, like, like, I want to give you a grape job sticker. This was inspired. I mean, <laughs> And then they just completely got rid of them? Well, Disney, you better get ready for my scathing one-star IMDb review. So moving along with the actual movie itself, our main characters arrive in Neverland. Some pirates start shooting cannons at them because they're with Peter, and of course, Captain Hook doesn't like Peter Pan. And so John and Michael end up getting captured by the pirates. Leave him alone! What do you have for me, Mr. Smee? And Wendy washes up to shore and is saved by Tiger Lily. So, long story short, Captain Hook takes John and Michael to Skull Rock to execute them, but mainly it's to draw out Peter Pan so he can kill him instead. And then, of course, Wendy and Peter have to save them from the pirates, and, and just kind of summarizing several parts of the movie all together here, we come to find out that there's a lot more going on between Hook and Peter than you might think. Hook was a friend of yours, wasn't he? He was my best friend from the very first Lost Boy. And what happened? Neverland. Just wasn't good enough for him, I guess. He sailed away one morning, without a word, and left me all alone. So as Disney likes to do a lot with these remakes, they try to like humanize the villains and give some kind of like deeper reasoning as to why they do anything. You know, the Maleficent effect, if you will. No one's actually evil, man. They're just like misunderstood. So in this case, I think it makes sense to have some kind of reasoning for all this because in the original movie, it's kind of hilarious just how there's literally no backstory for anything. Good for Mr. Smee. Ah! <laughs> Did Pan show good form when he did this to me? I can't him. <laughs> Cutting your hand off was only a childish prank, you might say. Uh, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> they just, just cut your hand off, you know, as kids do. So yeah, originally Peter Pan is like this 500 year old child psychopath who just kidnaps Native Americans for fun and cut off Hook's hand one day because he was bored and like Hook is the villain. But in this new remake, they set it up so that they used to be best friends, but then Peter banished James because James said he missed his mom. And so James left Neverland, he was raised by pirates and somehow came back to get revenge on Peter for some reason. I didn't just leave Neverland. Peter made you go. My once and best friend banished me. All because I missed my... Your mother. Yes, my mother. 
now real talk here, I do think it's a good thing that they tried to give Hook more of a reason to be the villain. Because like I said, in the original movie, Peter Pan is like this psychopathic serial killer and Captain Hook is like, hey, yo, we gotta stop this kid. How is he the good guy in this story? <laughs> Now the movie ends in a very similar way to the original, where Wendy, John, Michael, and the Lost Boys all get captured by the pirates. Take me instead! <laughs> Only children let them live! Your largesse is admirable. Her large wife? But then of course they manage to break free enough to fight their way out. You have the boy's magic. No, this magic belongs to no boy. I mean, it's not really your power either, Wendy. Like, this is all coming from Tinkerbell, okay? She's the crux of this entire movie and gets zero credit. Like, Peter would also be nothing without Tinkerbell, okay? Let's get real here. And of course, Wendy is suddenly just a master of sword fighting, despite only ever using, like, wooden swords a couple times. <laughs> What is this, some kind of kid's movie or something? While this is happening, Tinkerbell covers the whole ship in pixie dust so it flies now. And then the kids just murder all the adults by dropping them from like two miles up in the air. And then they fly everyone back to London and just kind of decide to make their parents adopt all the lost kids. You know, these parents are rather chill about all this because like from their point of view their 12 year old daughter just kidnapped eight other kids and then was like ah they're your kids now mom well i definitely have no further questions and at the very end we learn that peter used to live in the same house that wendy lives in now and we get a little more backstory as to why he ended up in neverland in the first place this was your home it was once my mother scolded me one night and told me to grow up instead climbed out of the window leapt of the garden wall and never look back. Uh, yeah, you think maybe you might have overreacted a little bit there? Yeah, so this one time my mom told me to clean my room or else I couldn't play Fortnite. So then I ruined her life and became a god. What? And then in the very, very end, Peter decides to go back to Neverland because he doesn't want to grow up like Wendy does now for some reason. And that's pretty much where the movie ends. <laughs> So pretty much like every other Disney live action remake we've gotten due to the success of the 2010 Alice in Wonderland movie. Yeah, thanks for nothing, Tim Burton. This movie is enjoyable enough, I guess. I mean, Pinocchio was terrifying because of how they made him look, and the changes they made kind of missed the whole point of what Pinocchio was actually about. But this Peter Pan remake is fine. Like, they removed some of, like, the, uh, you know, <laughs> questionable parts in the easiest, most low-effort way possible. They gave Hook and Peter a sort of interpersonal backstory that kind of works, I guess. It's fine. Of the Disney remakes, it's one of the better ones, I'd say, which is which is really not saying much, but interpret that how you will. I do think they almost played it like a little too safe, though, because like they could have made Neverland like a really magical place, but this entire movie, it's, it's like a slightly more boring looking Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I mean, the Pirates movies actually look way better than this for some reason. It's kind of impressive just how drab they made Neverland look, you know? I mean, this is just everyone's backyard in Wales, but all the same, I totally understand why it exists. I get it, but like really it's just a shallow movie with some cool CG parts in it so yep it's a disney movie anyway thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to subscribe don't forget to ring that bell leave a like leave a comment all that stuff send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and let me know what movies or tv shows you think i should check out next and above all let's everybody have a great day and i'll see you all next time